Good evening, everyone. I really do hope you're feeling good wherever you are. And I hope you're excited about the show today because I am. I've been waiting for this for a long, long, long while. Um, There's so much to look forward to. Hi, everybody. It is seven o'clock. It is Thursday. And that can only mean one thing. It is the Mary Moo Show. And for the next hour, I'm going to be with you. And together, we have a guest. We have a guest who's going to be joining us. Um, Because the focus of this episode is all about inspiring the younger generation and letting them know that they have a purpose. They have purpose. Um, their past, it doesn't define them. There's an always a way out. And obviously listening to God and going back to the person who created us gives us that hope and uh, everything we need to achieve that purpose and to be that, to be everything God's called us to be. So I'm looking forward to that. But first, let's listen to some music. Let's get in, let's get in, let's get in. I am playing today some cool tunes. And I, I've chosen these ones on purpose because I think it really helps set the, the stage or just kind of helps ease us into our great interview. So let's get into First Timothy, Wait For Me, then Stevie Rizzo with Surrender. I love this one. I love that one. That's one to look forward to. And then we'll be right back and then the interview will commence. Stick around. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's your way or the byway. I don't play enough for my sake, no, nah, no. Nah. I feel like I wanna fall on my face down Seeing Christ in all my life, I beg you wait for me I'm just getting ready, I know that you're patient I wanna run away, I know you follow me Look, tryna catch me while I'm falling Tell them to catch up in this race and race for first place They wanna have fun after it's too late I'm moving, yeah Today, yeah Pause and rewind oh, so many times in my prime, but am I great? Maybe lately, life's been really crazy. I just wanna make sure that I'm on yours. I'm taking my time, I'm changing my life. I just wanna make sure that I'm on yours. Could you just yeah, wait for me? Just hold. Wait for me, I've been searching patiently Just hold, wait for me, yeah Look, wait for me I was struggling dangerously, oh I Can't believe I need time to fall in line Yeah Yeah In my life, remember I was down struggling dangerously Never knew I would be here strangely I will not be the one who's staying asleep, yeah I told you to pray for me Told them not to play, and now they play with me My soul, you know I'm playing for keeps Even if I die for you You know I ride for you, yeah I just told them they can't flex on me Told them make the best of me Show me where you want me, yeah Look around and won't you tell me what you see Around me, man, I cannot believe Something, something, something Maybe, lately, life's been really crazy I just wanna make sure that I'm on yours I'm taking my time, I'm changing my life I just wanna make sure that I'm on yours could you just yeah, wait for me? Just hold, wait for me. I've been searching patiently. Just hold, wait for me. Yeah, look, wait for me. I was struggling dangerously. Oh, I can't believe I need time to fall in line.
just a longing for you When nothing else was working for me, you You told me to let it all go I surrender I surrender to you I surrender I surrender to you Every road feel wrong You gotta keep going Cause where you at you don't belong You can feel it in your soul You worth so much more I was in a prayer after prayer But my connection was strong I had to reset and reconnect I had to talk to you alone It was on me to set the tone Then I found love I never known Now the connection steady growing Always there right or wrong He's right there to right my wrongs Matter the road, I'm never alone. It's deeper than words, it's more than a song. Look where I'm at, look what I'm on. Blessings overflow, steady pressing on. Ain't no looking down, cause I know he got me now. I came a long way from the wrong way, but it's your way now. Cause you wear the crown. I surrender. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed those tunes. I really did. You know, the one by First Timothy, Wait For Me, that was a new track, um, and I love it. And Stevie Rizzo's one is fairly new as well, Surrender. I hope you enjoy that. I mean, I did say it's one of my faves on the whole um, show, uh, so I hope you really did enjoy it. So, yes, welcome back, everybody. My name's Mary Moo, and you are with me on the Rack Radio Show. And I am here every Thursday from 7 to 8, hopefully talking about some inspiring topics with some great guests. I love every single one of them. They're all great. They're all wonderful. Um, And this show today is really about inspiring young people, really about letting them know about their purpose, that it actually um, not only affects them positively, but those around them. They just don't realise how much your life really impacts others, how much the decisions you make impacts others, not just ourselves. It's not every day me, me, me. (laughs) Um, But... Obviously, I'm also aware uh, that there are challenges to that. The re- the reality of it is, even as adults, some of us still struggle to understand why we're here, let alone um, the younger generation who have, you know, so much complex issues to deal with, the way they're raised from society, um, all the pressures. And even though it's 2023, we're still dealing with knife violence. And we're still de- dealing with, you know, gang culture and things like that in Great Britain, <laughs> in, you know, in the cities. And that's what you would expect. They haven't gone away. So we can't go away um, with our message of hope and our message um, to let them know that they do have a purpose. They do have a, you know, a chance to impact their surroundings around them. And that's why I think it's important. So don't run away if you're not Gen Z. <laughs> stick around because, like I said, everybody gets inspired by this, um, by this interview. So please stick around for that. So we're going to listen to some more music and then we'll go straight into the interview because there really is no need in just hanging around I really want us to really get the fullness of it. So, um, what are we going to do? We're going to listen to Impossible by Marv. I think that's a brilliant one. And then we'll go straight into the interview and I will see you on the other side. So this is Marv with Impossible. Impossible, yeah, there's no such thing for my God. Yeah, there's no such thing for my God. Yeah, there's no such thing for my God. Nothing too hard for my God. So there's nothing too hard for my God. Nothing he can do. Nothing he can do. There's nothing he can do. Nothing he can do. Nothing he can do. Too low, low, low 
I know my guy, he's in control. I done seen it with my own two eyes. Didn't get it right on the first few tries. Thank him every day for his love and his mercy. Hallelujah, he a mountain mover. If he brought you to it, he gon' see you through it. He won't leave you stranded or abandoned. Somehow managed to lift you up. Possible, yeah, there's no such thing for my God. Yeah, there's no such thing for my God. Yeah, there's no such thing for my God. Yeah, there's no such thing. Incredible, no, there's nothing too high for my God. There's nothing too hard for my God. So there's nothing too hard for my God. We have now reached the time, the segment of uh, the show where I get to interview someone and you know that I love to talk to people and you know we love to inspire here, you know we love to share things and today we're going to be sharing and discussing with a young man that I've come to know through the church, obviously we're at church um, and I start by saying this before he introduces himself and talks a bit about his career and things like that. I came out of the station, I believe it was Erdington train station, to go and visit my sister, because she lives in that um, um, area. And in front of me, as I came out, was a billboard. And I kept thinking, I, just, I know this guy. I've seen this guy before. And I walked past it, and then I had to stop and do a U-turn. And I went, wait a minute, this person, <laughs> I do know him. And he goes by the name of Yeshua Carter. Yeshua, how are you? Hey, I'm well, thank you. I'm really well. Excited to be on here. <laughs> <laughs> I am so pleased to be talking with you today. And I thought you can first of all explain to everybody what you were doing on a billboard. Are you a model? Or are you a what? Why were you there? <laughs> so far from a model, don't think I'd ever actually go into the industry. I'm not built for it. <laughs> but um so I used to work for a charity called First Class Foundation. Um I used to lead on a program called Dear Youngers, which ultimately was a service that helps provide psychologically informed spaces for young black and minority ethnic men between the age of 16 to 25. So to make it sound a bit more cooler, what we would do is just literally simply put on spaces um where we would have food and have kind of really insightful conversations um, with young guys who are black and Asian and come from those different communities, um, just around mental health. Um, so that was awesome. So I used to lead that. Um, and one of the clients that we was working with uh, was Westminster's Combined Authority um, to do some kind of like consultancy with them. So they were trying to kind of gain engagement from um, the young black community um, so we got some of the young men from our forums and I was one of them included and we was kind of talking to Westminster's combined authority and then out of the random like halfway through the call we was doing all these different like workshops and then one of them was like I think like your picture would be good like I think you'll see out of the random like I think you'd be good for um, the billboard to be on our, our advertisement for a job fair and um, a careers fair so I was like all right so like send for your picture cut along to be short sent through my picture and lo and behold they chose me to be on this massive campaign, which which was kind of ironic because the actual term was find your future. So there's my big head on all these billboards and underneath there's a slogan that says find your future. So prophetic, I guess so, but it was it. That's how it all came about. <laughs> wonderful I love that I love that I love that and something you said there um is obviously the basis of why I asked you not just because of your great picture <laughs> why I asked you to come on this show today is because 
um, we're talking about young people, really inspiring young, young people, and obviously you're young yourself, and really letting them know that it does pay to um, mm. take advantage or take, um, you know, take up these opportunities of, of, that are put out there, these spaces for them to, you know, deal with mental health and, um, you know, again, yeah. try and, you know, focus and shape their future, um, rather yeah. than um, doing what could be seemed easy, which is doing, going the route that can land them in prison effectively. Um, and mm. I thought, uh, obviously, in terms of your career, um, there's, there's so much going on. It looks like you've done quite a lot. What I would love to know, um, yes, you're now in, you're obviously you're then, you're in a place where you're leading and just trying to really look out for those um, communities, probably deprived communities and, and races. But in your mm. career, what inspired you and how did you um, mm. almost stay on the straight and narrow? And how did you build your career? Um, mm. Yeah, let us know. So I'll try to keep it as brief as possible because it's a very long story. It's like six years, but condensed into this um, little space. But um, so at the age of 19, um, I actually started my career. But before I stepped into my career, which I'll explain really shortly, um, my whole life was kind of, it was kind of extended above me and I had to reflect and step back for a moment. And what I mean by that is I just, at the age of 19, I just came out of college. So I did three years um, at a college in Birmingham. I finished college thinking that as soon as I step out, I'm going to find um, a really good creative based job. I really wanted to be, a, if anybody knows me, when I was between the age of 16 to 19, I was doing a lot of acting um, in theatres oh. across, yeah, across the UK um, in collaboration with the, uh, um, organization or social enterprise called gospel arts production so in my head I said you know what I want to be the next best Denzel Washington oh. I also want to run my own <laughs> I want to run my own um, drama and theater company as well and performance of art school so that was kind of like the trajectory of where I wanted to go but for those who know once you kind of leave the safety net of education it's not that easy to pursue a creative career um, like that unless you're probably innovating it or pioneering, pioneering it yourself or unless there's kind of like the opportunities that just come. It's very rare. And I found out that for myself the hard way because I finished college age 19, did three years, smashed my A-levels, did drama, music, English language and literature, creative writing, media, film studies, all A-levels. Got really top marks. And then as soon as I started to apply for apprenticeships um all the creative based apprenticeships that i was applying for so i pl applied for one in film they turned me down i applied for one in events they turned me down I applied for one in project management they turned me down and i got to wow. the point where i was like guys like what do you want me to do with my life right now like what what's the next steps and god just said honestly he taught me to proverbs 16 verse 3 i actually have it um on my wall it's my, one of my favorite scriptures and it says um, commit all your actions to God and he will make your plan successful. It was actually one of the focus scriptures for, I believe, March. Um, but just to kind of bring it to a conclusion and I'll, I'll make it really fast. Um, I said, OK, cool, God, well, I'm going to give you my life now. You haven't just taken me through this period um, of three years in college and school. And in school, I was getting mm -hmm. excluded and all these different things. And I was not mm -hmm. in the greatest crowds. But I was like, God, you brought me through this, not just to waste the talent and the potential. So, cut a long story short, God birthed me and put me into a place called Ernest & Young, EY, yeah. which is one of the biggest professional global service firms across the yeah. whole world. Yeah. Um, I started um, at the age of 19, just before my 20th birthday. And from there, um, my, I guess it was a few months into starting, I had a conversation and I promise you I'll bring it to an end because I know I'm waffling, but I had, a <laughs> I had a conversation with a colleague that changed my whole perspective. There was a stabbing that happened in the vicinity of the Birmingham office, and that colleague came to me and said, and everybody was like flabbergasted and was like, I can't believe that a stabbing happened in the heart of Birmingham City, count, like, mm -hmm. uh, Birmingham City Centre. I was, like, I was thinking in my head, it's like we are in the city centre, it's a marginalised uh, we're around marginalized areas such as mm -hmm. Aston, Handsworth, and disenfranchised areas. Like, of course, that's going to happen, but everybody was kind of desensitized and really detached from that reality. So, people were kind of saying, I can't believe that happened. You got there was a stabbing, stabbing on the tram, like, there's still blood on the tram, rare tear, tear. And my face must have been very nonchalant. 
So while people was talking to me, I could see the concern in their face. They was looking at me like, why is he not responding or reacting or showing any emotion? Like, is he the perpetrator? And when I realized people was like emotions, I said, guys, guys, wait, wait, pause. Let me just kind of give some insight. I was like, guys, listen, I've come from a community whereby I've had friends, I've had even people very close to me who have been victims of knife crime. By the grace of God, they're still alive. I've had friends who um, have carried um, knives. I, I, in our community, there's somebody who knows somebody that's been um, found victim mm. to knife crime or was in prison. So that was a normality for me. Um, and I once I explained that, I kind of like a weight lifted off me. And God said to me in that moment, Yeshua, now that you've been blessed to be in a place which with, which has abundant resource and influence across the globe, how are you going to make a difference? How are you going to be the opportunity creator and not the opportunity taker? Mm. So to bring it to a conclusion here, I, at the age of 19, I created my own um early intervention initiative called EY Outreach, um, which primarily at the start, in its embryonic stage, it was aimed to create a program to support young people who are susceptible of falling into the school to prison pipeline. So working with young people in people referral units, um, statistically, they're more vulnerable to getting caught in gangs. Um, but since then, it's become its own service within EY, where we've helped support make millions of pounds within the business, and whilst also doing social purpose and changing young people's lives we uh, we work across the government and infrastructure sector and yeah so that's kind of like the journey there I absolutely love it and you know I'll tell you something guys I actually told him don't tell me too much because I want to know I want to learn and you know uh get everything get get everything get the tea like when everyone else does so this is it's not like I know this already this is I intentionally didn't I asked you I said please just don't say so much stuff to me in the pre-interview stage because I want to just really get it all in. And it's, I'm so impressed because look how, you know, sometimes we think that we're, we're going to start off doing this. I mean, yeah, sure. I, I thought I was going to be an athlete. I legit thought I am going to be an athlete in my career. I don't know what I'm doing behind the computer screen, but it's so funny how we think something and then God's like, no, I need you somewhere else. And how God is used your background, what you know, to go into a yeah. place where yeah. they have the power, the ability, the money, the resources, the people, just the, the yeah. reputation to be able to make such an impact. Um, you know, as mm -hmm. you said in this initiative, I'm just so excited. Yeah. And you yeah. talked about um obviously that that intervention stage and you've you you did mention to me that you've you've done some prison work that's taken you into prisons and things can you talk yes. a bit about that as well yes yeah of course so um one of my primary clients um that i support is the ministry of justice and we worked with um a prison called hmp brinsford um i actually gained access to that prison by working with one of my mentors um he used to mentor me and now we um work in partnership with together he's an amazing guy his name's Nathan Schillingford he runs an organization called the invested man um he used to do a lot of um kind of pro bono work in the prison mm -hmm. and it kind of got so big that the governor of the prison the person that runs the whole institution heard about him and said Nathan I want to speak to you like I want to hear more about what you do so there was a big meeting and, and he said to me yes I know what you're doing through EY Outreach would you like to come with me to this meeting so to cut a long story short I went with him to the meeting and heard the governor's heart and she said you know what I've got three years until I retire and right now I want to ensure that we can help support these young people um, create pro-social identities help them settle back into the community more effectively help them become social benefactors and help them just have a transformational lifestyle and not re-offend and that's what my heart's on so when I heard her heart it just aligned so myself and Nathan we we went back um and we kind of co-developed an initiative and actually by the grace of God we was able to break history in the aspect that um once we designed this program we went back out to the violence reduction unit which is a massive organization that works in collaboration with Westminster Minister Police and they actually funded gave us all their funding um to deliver this program but that was the first time ever that the violence reduction unit in the West Midlands have ever funded a prison-based program. So quite a long wow. story short, yeah, we delivered a, a five-week um, program 
in, in simple terms. In, but basically, in layman terms, the five week programs is a resettlement and rehabilitation program whereby we utilize creativity as an intervention tool to help young people maximize their potential, to understand their skill sets that they have, their talent, but to ultimately allow them to understand their identity, their purpose, their values, so that they can take that and actually, once they step in, not even once they step out of prison, but whilst they're in prison, they can understand their purpose and, and bring that into fruition and materialize that and also impact other lives, other lives in prison and outside of prison. So we did that by allowing the young people to go through different workshops they created their own short film within the prison which was awesome and then they wow. hosted their very own showcase so yeah wow. that's a kind of a bit about the program I, I'm so impressed because you said so many gems you said so many things uh from just the, the, you know having people realize their potential and realize they're more than just yeah. prison they are more than just gun mm, violence. Bang they're bang. more than just street life. Yes, yes. They're more than just all this. Yes, kind of, and yes, that's yes. my heart for wanting to do this show yeah. is that people yeah. know that you can act. Yeah. You're more than that. You are a lot more than that. You've been, of course, you've been, of course. You've been born with so much. And it's about having these organizations yeah. that are providing these opportunities. To say, look, we've, we've got the, the resources to be able to, like, what do you want to do? What do you want? You want to do film? Okay, fine. Like you said, we'll make a short film. Mm. And I think. I, I know, yes, well, more than the survivors weeks or however long you've done this, you've actually impacted people's lives. Let them know this is possible because okay. I, I can assure you that a lot of them yeah. didn't even think yeah. that something like that, like you mm -hmm. said, it was the first mm -hmm. that's ever been done. So it was, we know, <laughs> before yeah. you guys came along, it yeah, wasn't I, done before. Yeah, it, it, it was so beautiful. And I think you hit the nail on the head. I think a lot of people, especially those who've come from communities or situations where they've been engrossed in criminality they believe that their past mistakes define them not recognizing that actually it doesn't define you but you can utilize it as something to help catapult you into your next steps and that's the same thing that Moses did like Moses was a murderer but I believe that through that situation because he gave his he gave his actions he gave everything to God he then a lot, he, that that characteristic, that resilience was then trans. It, it then translated into basically tenacity. So that murderer, he then became a, a, a fervent leader. And I think a lot of these young people don't recognise that their experiences it doesn't define them, but actually it should shape them and actually can they can utilise everything that they've learnt to be the next leader. And it's the, the beauty of it, there was there's two standout people um, in the program. All the young people that we worked with is phenomenal amazing we worked with 12 young people what two st stood out for me because before i started the program god told me that purpose isn't constrained by the four walls of the prison a lot of us have this idea that once you go to prison like your purpose stops because you can't do nothing or you trap 23 hours in confinement god said to me no that's not the case and said and god said i'm going to demonstrate that and he utilized two young people who actually after kind of going through the program and understanding that they've got a purpose and that God's given them a, a destiny. They started their very own programs, and now the governors have now invested into their programs for them to run it out. So one's called one of the guys, um, for the sake of like confidentiality, I won't say his name, but one of the guys started a fitness program, and now he's going to be rolling that out across the prison to support other young people. Another guy said he wants to utilize his lived experience to help um, support young people away from the criminal justice system. So now he's going to be doing that as well. And he actually changed, yeah. he actually allowed me to understand purpose even more. So that was kind of the beautiful thing is kind of seeing how, you know, when God utilizes your life and you walk in, the, in a calling, it, it creates a catalyst to impact so many other people's lives. And that catalyst keeps on going and going and going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. I really do. And it's beyond what you've done. And, you know, Yeshua and I were talking beforehand and I was just getting a bit of my career because I know it's not about me at all, but what I one of the things I was saying is I'm just fascinated how all the, the advice I was given, all the things I was asked to do, all the things I did following God's footsteps, even all the way from London to here, you start realizing how you, you it impacts other people and you're you, you're so surprised. You start your purpose becomes even more yeah. apparent, more lived. And um, and that's what what I really would like to encourage people that you, you it's beyond you and it might not happen 
mm. instantaneously. But over time, you'll see that God knows what he's doing by leading people. Like you said, talks about Moses, mm. about, you know, start off as a murderer. But before that, he was um, mm. he was in the, the Pharaoh's palace. He was brought up and skilled, mm. you know, the access mm. to the best education, everything else. Who else would have been the best person to go back into that same um, place to say, thus saith the Lord, let these people go. You needed somebody like that who, who knew who, who knew what it was up against in many ways. And God could have used anyone, but he decided, I'm going to use Moses. And he's like, I can't speak properly. Okay. I can't do this mm-hmm. properly. We all have excuses. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And God's like, actually, you, and it took, took him out of his career because he was there being a herdsman or whatever he was doing. God's like, no, nah, I, I need you to mm-hmm. be a leader. All the things that you've been mm-hmm. with and stuff like that. And that's why mm-hmm. I really like it. And did you want to say anything yeah. before I ask I, another question? No, no, I was literally just going to kind of solidify everything you're saying because I totally agree. I'm clicking behind scenes. I'm there like, yep, my head's shaking. Like, <laughs> but, like I'm, I just agree because I think one of the key things that any young, especially young people that I've been working with recently, one message that God keeps telling me to tell them is people need to recognise, especially as the body of Christ, but in general, like our lives are not our own and mm-hmm. our lives are connected to others so sometimes a lot of people go into their careers or go into life with such a narcissistic and selfishly driven ambition to say you know what I want to achieve success and because I want to get the next best car or I want to get the finances and God always reminds me like yo yes like your life is not your own you know Like every single choice that you make, every single thing that you do is connected to somebody else. Like your your disobedience could be the 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 thing that that blocks a generation because I might ask you to go into one place that you don't want to go into. Um and that place that you that that place that you go into will connect you to the next person that will allow you to access a hundred young people that need you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes God just always reminds me like when we think about purpose and when we think about our ministry, because I believe careers like your yeah, calling yeah. and your and your, and I believe it's ministry. That's I always believe. I don't detach the two just because it's not necessarily church based. Um, I believe that my career is my ministry. So God always says to me, Yeshua, listen, I need you to be obedient because in everything that you do, it will be connected to somebody and it will bring transformation to somebody. So this is why I love kind of just seeing, you know, you know like the, the the Josephs and the Moses and just seeing how they was obedient and said, you know what. Not not my will, but your will be done, Lord. So yeah, yeah man. I totally agree. And as you were saying that, I'll ask the question in the end. But what I just mm. obviously following from what you just said, and just to it will obviously encourage people as well. I um mm. got a job um um in London, and I was working mm. there, and as a senior project manager, and I wanted to leave because I actually to be to, to be the truth be told, I hated it. I hated mm. uh, not my job. I loved my job. I just I just don't think I was. Um, well, in my opinion, I didn't think I was the mm. right fit for the company in terms of uh, mm. culture and, and who I was as a person, especially when you're working in, in uh, a profession which is about employee engagement and ensuring employees are, you know, are, are really embedded in the culture and they, they're the best person for the job, for the co- company as well. Um, I just didn't mm. feel like I was and I hated it. But God was mm. like, You're, you, you cannot leave right now. I wanted mm. to leave so so many times because like no at one point I was crying in the toilet they go but why I, I don't understand this is torture here and the mm. funny thing is um there was somebody that was in there I remember one time God said to me um she's she's said to you that she's got a headache she's not feeling too well I want you to go and mm. pray for her so mm. I'm sitting there at work going what she's like one of the um account directors of the um, how can I just be going out there saying hi can I pray for you but God's like, yeah. Mary, go. The lady packed her bags. was like, I'm going home now. Oh, went, left the doors. Pressed. I yeah. heard the lift being pressed to go down. Mm-hmm. Go mm-hmm. now. Go now. So I literally mm-hmm. just went, okay, fine, God, I'll go. I ran out. I said, oh, um, hi, by the way, um, it's, uh, this is going to sound really silly, but can I pray for you? Um, I know you said you were well. And she went, oh, yeah. She was really surprised. And, and, I, and I prayed for her. And... Um, God gave me a word of knowledge there and then and said it's not actually doesn't feel well it's tension in the back of her neck and it's caused by xyz 
So I mm. said to her, um, and I prayed it, and I said, oh, yes, and the tension that's caused the back of her head because of blah, blah, blah. And she, her eyes opened, and she stared at me. She went, how did you know that? That's yeah, exactly yeah, what it's, yeah. How did you know? And this lady, actually, she was really deep in Hinduism, really, mm. really deep. And we talked about this literally last week because mm. I left that company now, um, coming on um, almost five years now. Mm. And mm. that lady is now a born again Christian. Wow. And we were talking wow. about that moment. She said that she was so surprised. She didn't know what was going She was so surprised that she was shaking all the way down the lift, like all the way down the lift. All the way down wow. the lift. And that lady has been so integral in my career, getting me contracts in companies that she's worked wow. um, at. And I, I wouldn't have the contract that I um, that I had in it for the, the, for the longest, if not for her, because she went somewhere else and they needed somebody with my skill set. She went, oh yeah, that's that lady there that she remembered. And it's, financially blessed me but the biggest reward is um her coming to know god on in on her own terms how god did it yeah. through yeah. just like you said being obedient you just don't know yeah. and you're right about not separating the two because we can often think yeah. of ministry as church and stuff like that but yeah, yeah, as you yeah. said joshua if you the real original meaning of the word ministry yeah. it, it's, it's not separated <laughs> yeah yeah bang bang I, I love that you just get you gave me a flashback of a time where um I, I just love it when I hear about things like that because it just honestly brings so much joy to my heart. I remember um delivering a program, a music program, and <laughs> I remember God just saying, Yes, I just want you to um so so a client contacted and said, We've got some money. Normally I take a lot of time to plan and be strategic, but guys like, yes, just put something together and run with it. I'm like, that's not my style, God, I can't do it. But I ended up doing it. And um me and my, my really close bro, Tyus. Um, we ran this program through Dear Youngers and I remember thinking oh nobody's gonna come we didn't market it like we didn't advertise it like nobody's gonna come on the first session and lo and behold um, about 15 young people uh, ended up coming which was a lot uh, more than I expected mm. and at the end of the session um, I went to closing prayer I was actually doing the the program alongside Amos as well my bro so uh, um, it was me Amos Ty it's called the Sound Choices program and at the end of the, the the first session, I remember kind of bringing everyone together. I always like to open and pray, no matter if it's like work related. I just I just do it. That's just like a part of part of me. And yeah. so um, I remember bringing everybody together and saying, "Listen, I want to pray." But there were some young people, um, kind of like lingering behind. And the client was actually in the room, but the client knows me, so she she's she's okay with me praying. But I was just a bit uncomfortable because thinking oh, I don't want to make it look like. We're like grooming the young people through <laughs> yeah, religion. Yeah, yeah, so I was yeah. thinking, oh, like I was trying to like say to the young people, oh, can you just step out for the moment? But there's a, a cohort of them, just like about three or four of them, just stood behind. So they're like, they, they want to be a part of it. I was like, mm. oh, they said they want to be a part of it. Like, okay, cool. I'm just gonna pray in it. So I prayed, and in the middle of the prayer, I remember God saying, "There's a young person that I need you to stop, and you need to tell him um, some of the things that he's gonna do is going to lead him." Um, into the wrong path and it's going to be detrimental to his life and he's involved in a b and c and all these different um criminal activities and if he doesn't stop it's going to impact his life very negatively so i was like oh god you know when you get that feeling in your belly where you're about to give a word of knowledge but you're like god but what, what what if it's not you like what if it's just like my brain thinking that and god was yeah. like nah like you need you need to tell this guy so i remember praying and then the young person was about to walk out the room and there was, as I said, there was about three or four of them. I just called one of them. I said, let me talk to you. And then I said everything that the Holy Spirit said about, yo, you about to do something yeah. that's going to cut. And then similar to, this is why I was smiling behind the screen because mm. similar to um, your story, I, see, I remember seeing his eyes open up wide, like it's about to jump out of his brain. And he was like, how did you know that? Like, yeah, that's crazy because he was about to do some madnesses yeah. and he's like what's happened and then we ended up finding out that his family was also born again christians and that and that he was going through these battles with like gang violence all these different yeah. things and that but that word i don't know if if without the uh, obedience i don't know whether that if he would have ste done something where he would have lost his life or taken somebody else's life or do you know what i'm saying yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, a beautiful man definitely and i you know i would say this though as as those of us who are Christians, I'm not going to just ex expect everyone to be who's going to listen to this, but those of you who are Christians, and even those who are not, you could really aspire for these spiritual gifts because they do save lives. Yeah. And wherever you are in, like I'm, as you were saying this, I mean, I remember my brother went through a phase where he was, and he's he's got YouTube videos out about this, so he he has no problem in me repeating this. But 
he had issues where he was um, going down the gang path and you know forming a gang in our area where there was none <laughs> just being mm-hmm. just up to absolutely no good and I remember God told me that him and his friend the exact location it wasn't even a dream actually it was like a vision because I remember physically I actually thought I was there like I don't know if you, if you can understand but I actually felt like I was there like 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 you're in a room now I honestly felt yeah. that was the case and I saw them getting arrested for um I can't remember what it was something to do with drugs something like that in this exact location remember the guy was on his bike brother was next mm-hmm. next to him and I told my brother and I said this friend of yours God told me this friend um how is going to be arrested blah 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 my brother actually got really scared <laughs> and he wow. told him he told the guy he said oh my sister said that you know and she she's you know she's really deep this thing you know you know oh well done it so my brother did like obviously um it's part of his journey how he he got saved and now obviously he's evangelist blah 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 but this way, right. same guy he he didn't th- he got arrested for in the exact place all the exact thing and spent four years and he oh. came out my brother had to speak to him remember we, and he was like yeah yeah your sister said in it your sister said it. Your sister said. Oh, and oh. uh i i, I said I, that those stories to actually encourage people if we're christians wherever we find ourselves whether they're young people or not um just you know and um strive for these gifts because they really do um touch people's lives more than you'd ever know and especially mm-hmm. with young people they're going through so much that I don't think sometimes we really realize. It's like only if you've come from that background, you would know how to um, what they were going through. But they're going through so much. There's a lot of peer pressures, mm-hmm. a lot of things, gun violence mm-hmm. and, and knife crime that is still happening in 2023, even though we think why it still is there. There's still these pressures um, that um, that come along. So wherever we can at our workplace, wherever we can be this be christ-like in these situations is worth it and for everyone else who's young as well god one thing that um yeshua said that's that's really important is is about purpose you were totally yeah, made yeah. for so much more than what yeah. you would think mm-hmm. totally so much more and mm-hmm. um it's just about realizing that and no and believing that god um made you for so much more someone said this to me that God didn't just make you for the lifespan of earth. He made you because he loved you to spend eternity with you. He's like, oh my goodness, you're such an amazing person. I want to spend eternity with you. Like not just the lifespan of earth, (laughs) of Mm -hmm. earthly thingy, forever, ever, 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 ever. (laughs) He wants you there back. And so, and he's created you with so much purpose and things. So you're, you know, you're worth more than that. And um, Isha, what would you say? Because you've talked about it briefly, but probably just to bring it back. For people who kind of feel a bit like they don't know what they're going, they don't know where they're going. They 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 thought, that, you know, they would be a actor or an athlete or a, um, I don't know, something else, but they feel a bit lost because that lost state, I feel, makes, pushes people down the wrong path. So what would you uh, sort of recommend? Uh, I would say from a uh, from a practical and a spiritual point of view, because sometimes you have to be a bit practical as well. Yeah. Sometimes I believe that your passions uh, can always be an indicator to point towards your calling. And what I mean by that, utilizing myself as an as an example, as I said, I was so passionate about drama and and creativity. Uh, I just loved it when I was in school. I wanted to be an actor. Now, that wasn't necessarily my calling, but it was an indicator to demonstrate that actually, yes, sure, when you step into your calling, creativity is going to be the the, the gift, the thing that you're going to utilise to help do your purpose. So now, through my intervention programme, it's all about how we utilise creativity as uh, whether that be drama, music, whatever that creativity looks like, innovation, to help transform lives. And if I bring it back to the Bible, when we look at Joseph, one of the key things was is Joseph was a dreamer. He was dreamer, and he was always having like, <laughs> like strategic mm-hmm. dreams about things happening and 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 pe- things about all these different things he had dreams about, right? But that was just an indicator to demonstrate that we needed a visionary, somebody that was able to 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 see to be in a position of hierarchy when it got to when he became you know um, Pharaoh's kind of like right hand. So it's like this kind of strategic person, this person that was dreaming, this person that was ambitious, all of those passions, all of those skill sets that was within Joseph was just an indicator to demonstrate 
where he was meant to go. So sometimes I would say, don't nullify the gifts that you have, whether you, whatever that is, whether you believe that you're very strategic, whether you're a visionary, whether you're creative, whatever, whatever it is, as I said, Joseph was very creative because the way that he articulated his dreams was very creative. It was very, um, yeah. it, it wasn't like how the normal person would articulate it. Um, but that same creativity was a, the same creativity that allowed him to become the top person when he went to prison. So he was able to get get himself uh, to be the leader in the prison and him telling people's um, kind of interpreting dreams and understanding knowledge and all those different things. That was also the same skill set that he utilized when he became Pharaoh's kind of like right hand or vice president, whatever you want to call it. So I would say like your 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 passions and the giftings that you have, ask God to kind of expose those, especially if you're young, ask God to expose those, to shine a light on them so you can understand what those skill sets are, what these giftings are. And that will be an indicator to demonstrate where God's taking you. Um, that's what I believe. So, yeah. I love that. I love that. Ask God to expose it. Ask God to say, to help me identify it. And I... I'm so convinced that if you ask him, he will. And yeah. um, and it can be gradual bit by bit. Because so, sometimes the, the scripture does say we see in part and we know in part. He can unveil one part, unveil one part, unveil one part, unveil one part. And before you mm. know it, you're you're in where you need to you need to be, um, just by mm. listening to him and just um trusting where he leads and guides. Um, yeah. because he really does. I mean, as much as I feel or any we all feel that like we have passion for um the young people there's no one who loves them more than god and he he will do anything he can just to keep us on this right road because it does pay it does mm -hmm. pay to do things um do things right because you end up having a really great career and loving mm -hmm. your job and um just being able to impact people's lives and earn yeah. an honest living you know yeah. and yeah. earn an honest living and things like that so i think yeah. before we go yes i wondered it, you know various um initiatives you have are there any that you can sort of talk about that people who might know somebody who might know somebody who could um take advantage of it or might know somebody in prisons or, or any anything do you, is there anything that you can share that people can take advantage of and um, yeah. hopefully you know get involved in most definitely so um definitely through my ey outreach initiative um we are looking to in the near future um, take on people through place um, paid opportunities for um, young people between the ages of 11 um, all the way up into 25 as well as that an amazing charity called First Class Foundation um, that is Birmingham based um, they have a lot of amazing um, opportunities that are out there as well but one thing I would always say um, and this has been like my mantra um, there's two mantras right so one is if there's no opportunity to take, um, don't be the opportunity taker, be the opportunity creator. So Love be that. innovative like God. The Bible says no one to him is able to do, um, no one to him is able to ask or think or, um, and imagine more. Um, now unto him is able to do more than you can ask, think or imagine according to the power that works within you. So it's not over that scripture yet, <laughs> Ephesians uh, no. in chapter three. But basically that, that scripture always um, kind of shows me that God is kind of imploring you to, be imaginative, to ask more than you, you expect, to think above um, your, your your kind of standard capacity, to be so creative. And sometimes you for you to be the pioneer and the starter of something. So if, if there's not opportunities around that you can't take, create them. Um, yeah. You've got that same creative ability and power that the that god god's in input that within you to to be able to create as well so yeah that's that's what i would say i love that and i think that's a wonderful thing to end with i hope you took notes everybody on the various um things you can be involved with or you can pass on to those who you think may need it but i think the greatest thing you've said is if it isn't there create it god has god in the beginning god created that's what the first few words of the scriptures of the bible um and he we are made in his own image and if god can create we can create and we have the ability and mindset to do so so if something isn't right something isn't working or you see a lack that that to me just shows that there's a reason why you, only you're seeing it or feeling it it could be the perfect opportunity for you to step out and to create something that's great that will impact um others 
Um, so yes, well, thank you so much for your time. Um, I really loved our conversation. Um, is there any anything else you want to say before we just close it all off? Um, yeah, I, I really, I think my final thing is I really, really, and this was actually on my heart like a few days yeah. ago. I was just reflecting and was just so honored that, you know, God chose to use me um, and, 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 and gave me the opportunity to serve him from a young age. Um, and there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes, um, it's 12, and it says, remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you would say, I have no pleasure in them. So the Bible really kind of encourages us as young people to remember God in your youth, because I believe once you say yes to God in your early, in your early stages, God will set you up. <laughs> God will set you up for things that will blow your mind. When you say yes from early, there's so much that God will do. And this is not being discriminated towards age. I'm not saying that God can't do that for, for people who are older in age. That when somebody says yes to God from young and you have the confidence and the faith to, to, to say yes and walk in God, he would do so. Jeremiah is an example of that. Like when, when um, Jeremiah, when God came to him and gave him the vision and Jeremiah was like, I'm too young. The, 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 the kind of follow-up response from God was like, listen, I don't want you to say I'm only a youth, I, I'm too young. I don't want you to, I, I don't want you to be afraid and I'm going to be the one that works with you and I declare that you will do these amazing works, basically to paraphrase. So one final thought is I encourage young people to recognise that tomorrow's not promised. The Bible says in Psalms 90 verse 12 that um, it says, teach me to understand the shortness of life, but that's where I gain wisdom. You don't know when your life will end. Young people's lives are getting taken away by so many different things. And God wants to utilize your life. He wants you to, to, to showcase that purpose, to be that light on this earth from, the very, from, from your youngest age. So say yes to God today and, and don't stray away from it. So that will be my final, um, final line on that. Thank you so much, Esther. It's been a pleasure having you on. And I know that, um, I'm, I'm saying I know that those of you who are listening, um, it's been great. We love having these conversations and this is the reason why I do it. Um, so please um, listen back, um, find us on YouTube or Mixcloud and just uh, just find us somehow to replay this and to send it out to any young people you know, just encourage them, like, look, it is possible. Um, it might seem boring, but it is the best path um, to take when you follow God's, God's way. And there we have it. That was the interview. I did say it was going to be good, didn't I? And I really do hope um, you're able to take away something and feel inspired and feel like, you know what, God, I'm going to ask you to expose my purpose and how I can impact uh, my society, the world, my family, my life and those around me. It was worth it, wasn't it? If you've just been listening and you're wondering, who am I? <laughs> what am I doing? My name is Mary Moo and every Thursday I host this show between seven and eight. And, and we have great conversations that we've just had with Yeshua. And we listen to fresh music, some great fresh um, gospel hydration. And uh, we're going to close out the show with a great song. Actually, it was one of the first songs that I played when I first started doing this radio show but I brought this one back because I really do feel it relates to every single one of us especially when you step into what God has for you the calling God has for you you're chosen and it's for a reason so this is Marie Zoo with Chosen and I'll see you next week uh, yeah. I'm chosen So many times I, so many times I wonder why, like why did you choose me, why would you care about my life, and now I know that I know that I know that you love me. And I'm sure that I know that I know that you called me Out of the many others you saw me You called me You chose me
Oh yeah, see your favor 